Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a mystery thriller film called King's Game. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The story surrounds a class of 32 school students studying at Tamaoka High. One night, the protagonist of the film, Chimi, gets a message from a strange number. The message says that her class has been chosen to play the world's most unique game, called the King's Game. The rules are simple. 1. No one is allowed to withdraw from playing. And 2. The King's order has to be completed within 24 hours. At the end of the text, the King gives them their first task. The student in the 28th rank has to confess his feelings to his crush. Chimi ignores the strange message and gets a good night's sleep. The next day, she walks to school with her childhood best friend, Nobuaki. It turns out that he also received the same text. They laugh at it, believing it to be some kind of prank. Soon, the class discovers that the message was sent to all of them by the same number. They urge the 28th kid to reveal who his crush is. On popular demand, he walks up to the girl and confesses his feelings. Although the girl rejects him, the class gets a good laugh out of it. Anyone else having flashbacks to high school? Suddenly, all of their phones ring at the same time. They receive a text from the king that says the mission has been completed. Later that night, the king texts them the second task, according to which number 4 and 19 have to kiss each other. The king is starting to seem like a pervert. In the classroom, some people think the prank has gone too far, but number 19 has no problem kissing number 4. She walks up to him and plants a brief kiss, just for the class's entertainment. The guy is left flustered as everyone erupts into cheers. Some of the girls do not like the fact that their classmates are supporting the pranks, but until they know who is behind it, they cannot take any action. That night, they again receive a text with a third task. This time, the guy with rank 18 is told to touch number 3. Number 3 is horrified to read the message because she doesn't want to be the center of attention in the classroom. The following morning, the guys are excited, hoping to see something out of the ordinary. However, their excitement vanishes when they find out number 3 didn't come to school. Later that night, all students get a text saying that since number 3 and 18 didn't obey the king's order, their existence will be erased. Right then, their pictures from the class photo disappear. Seconds later, they receive yet another text. For the next task, number 20 and 17 will have to have sex. This is even more complicated because number 17, Misaki, has a short-tempered boyfriend named Yahiro who won't even allow her to talk to other guys. The class doesn't think much of it until the following day when they notice the students who didn't complete their task yesterday are absent. Moreover, their seats are missing and their phone numbers have been erased from everyone's cell phones. When the teacher enters the classroom, they tell her about the missing students. To their utter surprise, the teacher says that no students of such names have ever been in the class. The students finally realize that King was serious about erasing their existence. After the class, they check the school's record book but cannot find the missing students' names. As a last resort, they call the students' parents and discover that they have completely forgotten about their own children's existence. The only people who know number 3 and 18 once existed are the students in the class. The most nervous of them all is Misaki, who has been tasked to sleep with number 20. Her boyfriend Yahiro threatens number 20 to stay away from his girlfriend no matter what. He still doesn't want to believe that the game is real, but Misaki has made up her mind. That night, Chimi stays at her best friend Nobuaki's house because her father is not in town. They have dinner together with Nobuaki's parents and little sister. After dinner, Chimi and Nobuaki are in his room when they get a text saying that the last task has been completed, meaning that the two students must have slept with each other. For their next mission, everyone will have to follow Yahiro's orders for an entire day. The task stirs trouble because Yahiro is especially mad at number 20 for sleeping with his girlfriend. The next day, he slaps Misaki for cheating on him and is even more furious when number 20 doesn't come to school. He orders number 20 to die at that very instant. Because his orders must be followed, somewhere else, number 20 suffers from heart failure and dies in the middle of the road. Passers-by stop to check up on him, but suddenly, they ignore his existence and go about their day. Seconds later, his dead body disappears, along with all his belongings. 
In the classroom, the students are left stunned to see his desk vanish. They discuss what might be causing this, but get no definite answers. Some students want to inform the police, but they acknowledge that no one would believe the absurd story. After school, a girl named Ria calls Chimi Nobuaki and his friend Naoya to the library. For some reason, Ria seems to know a lot more about King than anyone else. She claims that the King is a curse to their class. When asked how she knows this, she doesn't give them a straight answer and walks away. That night, they get the sixth task in which two students, number 22 and 6, have to take part in a popularity contest. All the students must vote for either one of them, and the one with the least votes will be punished. Anyone who refuses to vote will also be punished. The following day at class, number 22 and 6 are nervous. Nobuaki takes a stand and asks half the students to vote for 22 and the other half for 6. That way they can manipulate the votes and save both of them without breaking any rules. Everyone does as told, but when it is time to count the votes, someone seems to have not obeyed the rules. Number 22 gets an additional vote and is saved. Meanwhile, number 6 freaks out, thinking that she is about to disappear. In the moment of panic, she dies. This means that King didn't get to punish her for losing. Seconds later, her dead body disappears. The students get another text saying that since King didn't get to punish her for losing, in her place, number 26 will die until she confesses her sin. The class realizes that number 26 voted for the guy to kill number 6 just because she didn't like her. Everyone knows the truth, but 26 doesn't confess her sin and runs away. Because of this, she also disappears. Everyone blames Nobuaki for causing two deaths instead of one because of his stupid idea. Later that day, Ria calls Chimi to the library and shows her several news articles that report similar incidents. Together, they discover that over the years, the entire class of students has gone missing on several occasions. But if they cease to exist completely, who remembered their disappearance and made the articles? The articles also contain the class pictures of the missing students. In each of the pictures, there is a guy who looks an awful lot like Nobuaki. This makes Ria believe he might be related to the disappearances. However, Chimi doesn't believe her since she has known Nobuaki since her childhood. The only reason Ria can come up with is that King might have manipulated Chimi into thinking she knows Nobuaki. Later that day, they get the next task from the king. This time, the students have to put all their pens inside a single box. Then, they have to take out the pens one after another, according to their numbers. One person can only take three or fewer pens at a time. The individual who has to take the last pen will lose, and hence, disappear. The class does as told, and a guy ends up with the last three pens. If he takes one, Nobuaki will die, and if he takes two, Naoya will. Initially, the guy belittles Nobuaki for killing number 6, who he loved for a long time. In the end, he takes all three pens, sacrificing himself because he feels guilty for not being able to save number 6 yesterday. That day, while returning home, Chimi and the group find two girls laughing and chatting like everything is great. On being asked, they say that they have found a brilliant idea to stop King from ever troubling them again. Later that day, Chimi and Nobuaki go to Chimi's house because her father is not home. Nobuaki notices pictures on the wall, but finds it weird that none of them have people's faces. It is also interesting that since the beginning of the movie, Chimi's father has either been talking to her from his room or has been out of town. As Chimi and Nobuaki are talking, they receive a text from King saying that someone has been disqualified for breaking the rules. Soon, several of such messages start popping up on their screen. Naoya calls them and reveals the brilliant idea that the girls were talking about earlier was to simply block the King. However, they didn't take into consideration the rule that said anyone who withdraws from the game will be removed. Because of the mistake, most of the students vanish, leaving only eight of them alive. For the next task, the class president is asked to text the word die to two people of their choice. The ones who receive the text will be killed. The next day, the teacher comes to the class and doesn't notice that most of them have disappeared. A frustrated class president asks her to look around and breaks down crying. Chimi takes her to the washroom to calm her down, but when the president is in a bathroom stall alone, she dies. When Chimi comes looking for her, she finds a puddle of blood, but the president has already disappeared. Soon, they receive a text from King, informing them of the class president's decision. Since she couldn't complete the task, the responsibility falls upon Nobuaki. 
Whoever he sends the text to will die, but he has to text three people instead of just two. By now, the students know that in the end, all of them are going to die, but they do not want to go down without a fight. Chimi, Naoya, and Ria stay in the school, while Nobuaki and the three others go for a trip to the oldest school where the disappearance first took place. According to the articles, since it was a long time ago, the students didn't have telephones. King used to communicate with them through letters. The game was played in the same way, and there seemed to be a winner in the end. The students separate to the different parts of the school, looking for any useful evidence of the game's origin. But all of a sudden, someone hits Nobuaki on his head and knocks him out. When he wakes up, he sees that three of his classmates have tied him up. It turns out that they have also seen the pictures from the article and discovered that Nobuaki is in all of them. This led them to believe he is in fact the king, and if they kill him, they won't have to play the games anymore. Somewhere else, Rhea, who has analyzed the game thoroughly, claims that the articles are a trap. If no one can remember the past of the disappeared students, the articles shouldn't exist. This means that it is one of the king's tricks to make the students go against each other. When the group puts two and two together, they realize that the other three who are with Nobuaki have fallen into King's trap and are probably trying to kill him. Naoya immediately calls Nobuaki, but the group declines. He is now sure that his friend is in trouble. Somewhere else, the three students are seconds away from killing Nobuaki, but to his fortune, they disappear right before they cause him any harm. It turns out that Naoya logged into Nobuaki's email and sent them all a text saying die. This completed King's task and made them disappear. Right after, the surviving students receive another text that says, Naoya will be eliminated because he pretended to be someone he wasn't. A distressed Nobuaki quickly calls his friend, who disappears while talking to him. After that, Nobuaki searches the school and finds a picture that he once saw in Chimi's house. Back in the school, Rhea has finally debunked what the main aim of the King's game is. She thinks that the operator of the game is not King. In fact, the game is made to make the King suffer. Throughout the game, everything has been fair, except when the operator played a foul card and made the students falsely believe Nobuaki is the king. His intention was clear. He wanted Nobuaki to die. And with Nobuaki's death, the person who hurts the most would be Chimi. This means that the game was made to hurt and trouble Chimi, which makes her the king. Chimi refuses to believe her and runs to the classroom. There, Nobuaki is waiting for her in his seat. He reveals that when the king's game was first played, there was one winner. The said winner was Chimi herself. Nobuaki has also discovered that when she won the game, she refused to be the next king like she was supposed to. So, as a curse, she was made immortal and her memories were erased. Ever since, she has joined many new schools with a new memory of her childhood and new friends. And every single time, she has had to watch them die and suffer her initial trauma again and again. Nobuaki thinks the only way to stop her from creating more King's games is by killing her. At the same time, Rhea receives a text saying that she is a threat to the continuation of the King's game, hence she will have to die. In the end, only Nobuaki and Chimi are left. He launches at her to kill her, but she manages to run downstairs. In the following struggle, Chimi kills Nobuaki to save herself. Somewhere else, Nobuaki's father makes fun of his wife for accidentally serving four people when they only have one daughter. The family laughs it off, completely forgetting about Nobuaki's existence. Back in school, the hurt is too much for Chimi to take. She dies. Six months after the incident, a new girl arrives at another school in a different town. She is welcomed by Chimi, who turns out to still be alive because of the curse. The King's Game will continue until she finds a way to end it herself. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.